well, 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 look who's back and ready to solve some radical and rational equations. Um, hey, look, I mean, we've kind of done similar stuff to this. When you're de dealing with radical equations, you want to isolate the radical, which is like a square root sign, and then you'll cancel that out. Same thing here. When you are solving using nth roots, you want to uh, isolate to just that variable with the exponent. So on this first one, 2x to the fourth equals 162, we would want to get rid of that 2 first. Now that's 2 times x to the fourth, so we would divide by 2 on both sides. So we have x to the fourth equals 81. Then you want to cancel out that root. Now what is the opposite of x to the fourth? The inverse operation would be taking the fourth root. Okay. So we're going to fourth root each side. Now, when you're solving equations, you can have multiple answers here. The fourth root of 81 could be 3. Because 3 to the 4th power is 81. It can also be negative 3 because the negative 3 to the 4th power is also 81. So if it's an even root, you have to consider the positive and negative answers when you're solving equations. It's different than when you're simplifying. When you're simplifying, you just take the positive root when you're doing this. But when you're solving the equations, and it's an even root, like a square root or a fourth root, you have to consider the positive and negative answers. All right. And you can check in the original equation to make sure that neither of those are extraneous solutions. Um, but both of those happen to work out. All right. Over here, x minus 2 to the third power equals 10. We've got it isolated to where it's just all that stuff to the third power. So now we can cancel out that third power by cube rooting both sides. So it cancels out the x to the third, so we just have x minus 2, right? Because the cube root cancels out the third power. And then 10 doesn't have any perfect cubes in it. So we can just leave it root 10. And remember, there wouldn't be a negative root 10 because it's a third Power. When it is an odd uh, root that we're looking for, then it stays the same. So if we're taking an odd root of a positive number, it would only be a positive answer. If it's a cube root of a negative number, it would only be the negative answer. Check in. All right, I just was checking an email heading, making sure it wasn't super important. All right, now we just have to get x by itself. So how do we get rid of minus 2? We add 2. This is kind of like when we were completing the square. And these are kind of unlike terms, so we're just going to say x equals 2 plus the cube root of 10. Now you could also, in theory, get the cube root of 10 as a decimal, which would be like 2 point something, and then do 2 plus the 2 point something and get an answer there. But this is a more exact answer because it's not rounded with the decimal. All right, here we go, radical equations. So again, isolate the root or the radical and then cancel that out by doing the inverse operation. Um, and see in the original equation if there are any extraneous solutions. So this first one, we have the five outside of the radical. We're gonna have to cancel out that five and it's five times this cube root. So we're gonna divide by the five cube root of 4x plus 3 equals 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now, how do we cancel out the cube root? We cube it, baby. We'll take it to the third power, and that will cancel out. So we have 4x plus 3, and then 3 to the third power is 27. We solve what's left. We have a two-step equation here. So we'll subtract the 3. 4x equals 24, and then we'll divide by the 4, and we get x equals 6. We're going to want to check in the original equation, make sure it works out. Uh, so let's see, 5 times the cube root of 4 times 6 is 24, plus 3 is 27, equals 15. 
cube root of 27 is 3, so 5 times 3 is 15. Great. It worked. No extreme solutions on that model. All right. On B, x minus 3 equals the square root of 4x. So the square root is isolated all by itself over there, so we're going to square both sides. Oh, my goodness. I just I can't stand when I do that. I swear, dude. I swear. Now, squaring the left side is a little bit trickier because it really means like x minus 3 times x minus 3, which you could FOIL that out, or there is a shortcut. Uh, you square the first term, multiply them together, and multiply by 2, because there would be two of those three negative 3x's, three right, if we FOILed it. So that would be negative 6x, and then you square the last term, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. On the right side, it just cancels out the square root, so we have 4x. Now, this is squared, so we're going to try to solve it by factoring, which means it needs to equal 0. So we're going to have to subtract 4x's from both sides. Give us x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals 0. What factors of 9 add up to negative 10? That would be negative 9 and negative 1. So x minus 9 x minus 1, and then if it says x minus 9, we know our answer would be positive 9. It says x minus 1, we know our answer would be positive 1. We are going to want to check these in the original equation to see if they both work. So if we check 9, let's see, 9 minus 3 equals the square root of 4 times 9. 9 minus 3 is 6. 4 times 9 is 36. And when we're solving these in the original equation, we only take the principal square root. So the square root of 36 is 6. We end up with 6 equals 6. Great. 9 worked. Let's try 1. 1 minus 3 equals the square root of 4 times 1. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Ooh. When we take the square root of 4 over here, we're just taking the principal square root, the positive square root. So negative 2 is not equal to 2, so 1 would be out on that one. All right, here we go. Same thing, we just have these fractional exponents. So again, just isolate the thing with the exponent, and then we'll get rid of the exponent in a second. But first, we'd have to get rid of this 2 out in front, which to do that, we would just divide by 2. 250 divided by 2 is 125, so we have x to the 3 halves power equals 125. Now, the nice thing about this is it's pretty easy to get rid of that 3 over 2 power. We're going to raise it to the power of the reciprocal. So you just flip over that fraction. So we're going to take both sides to the 2 thirds power. Because 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 would just come out to 1. We just have x. Now when we're doing something to the 2 thirds power, remember the denominator, the 3, is the root we're looking for. So we're looking for the cube root. And you can either do 125 squared, or we're going to take the cube root of it first and then square it. Either way works out. But to me, I like taking the root first because then it's just smaller numbers. So the cube root of positive 125 is just positive 5. You can't say negative 5 here because negative 5 to the third power would be negative 125. So it comes out to positive 5 to the second power, which is 25. If we put that in the original equation, 2 times 25 to the 3 halves power equals 250. So if we rewrote to the 3 halves power, that would be the square root of 25 to the third power. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 to the third is 125, and 2 times 125 equals 250. So it works out. You're going to want to check for extraneous solutions on all these problems. All right, here we go. Here we go. We've isolated the thing with the exponent. This is all to the one-half power on both sides. So we can go ahead and cancel that out by 
taking it to the reciprocal power. The reciprocal of one half is two over one, which is two. So we're just gonna square both sides. When we're doing two x to the second power, you gotta do two times two, x times x. So that would be four x squared. On the right side, all this just cancels, so we just have four x plus eight. It's squared, so we're probably gonna have to solve that factor. So to get the 4x to the other side, we would subtract it 4x squared minus 4x. Same thing with plus 8. To get it to the other side, we'd have to subtract the 8. Greatest common factor, all of these have a 4. x squared minus x minus 2. If we were to continue factoring that, factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 1 would be negative 2 and positive 1 x minus 2, x plus 1. So that our answers would become the opposite, x minus 2, x equals positive 2. x plus 1, x equals negative 1. Now, subbing these into the original equation, uh, let's see, 2x, let's do 2. 2 times 2. And then this is also the 1 half power, which is the same as the square root. So 4 times 2 plus 8. Four, 2 times 2 is 4. Over here, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 8 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So that one works. When we substitute in negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now, we can kind of identify this is already going to be a problem. Because the right side, we're taking a square root over here, and we're only taking the principal square root, which means the positive square root. So I know that at best we're going to come up with positive 2 over here, which isn't equal to negative 2. So negative 1 would be that extraneous solution. But we'll play the game. Uh, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 8 is positive 4. The square root of positive 4 is 2. And again, I know you can look at that and be like, okay, but the square root of 4 is also negative 2. And again, when we're solving back in the original equation, you just take the principal positive square root when you're checking your solution. All right, and this is the last section. So when you're solving an equation with two radicals, you're going to want to get a radical on each side of the equation, and then you're going to cancel it out like we have so this first one, to isolate the one radical, we can just add root one third to x to both sides. So that would say, whoa, square root of x minus six equals positive square root of one x. Now, if we were to cancel out the roots, we would square both sides which just drops the square roots. So we're left with x minus 6 equals 1 third x. We could do a few tricks here. You could multiply everything by 3, and then there won't be a fraction. So that would be 3x minus 18 equals 1x. From there, we could subtract 3x's. Negative 18 equals negative 2x, and then divide by negative 2. Oops, start writing the answer again. X equals positive 9. Check it in the original problem. Square root of X minus 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. Minus 1 third of X. 1 third of 9 is 3. So we have the square root of 3. Square root of 3 minus the square root of 3 is 0. Great. All right, one more. Kind of sad we're almost done here. This is too much fun. We've got a square root all by itself on that left side, so let's square both sides, which just drops the square root. 4x plus 28 equals x. Let's get the x's on the same side. Minus 4x minus 4x. 28 equals negative 3x. I'm guessing maybe that was supposed to be x squared. Divide by negative 3. 
28 and negative 3 don't have anything in common, so we can just leave it as negative 28 thirds equals x. If we sub that into the original uh, radical, it's going to be a little tough. That's okay. 4 times negative 28 thirds plus 28 equals the square root of negative 28 thirds. Okay, this is fun. Um, I'm kind of seeing a problem. can't square root negative 28 thirds on the right side here. So I feel like this one should just be no solution. All right, because that would go into the complex number system. And we're not doing that with the equations in this section. Um, so yeah, that would, that would be it. There. 4 times that plus 28. Great, yeah, no solution. I love it. 